It's time we talked about modulos. This is a way of using the remainder from a division in order to control something. And it's really useful for if you're changing modes in a device. You can loop through a number of options and then always return to the start. The example they give on the Arduino website is uh, with the divisor of five. So in this case, if you had zero, that's zero fives and zero left over. And the zero left over is the important part, so your result is zero. If you're starting with five, that's one five, but again you have zero left over. So your result with the modulo five is still zero. Likewise, if you're starting with a nine, under modulo five you have four left over, which means that your value is going to be four. Does it make sense yet? And once you get to ten, you start at zero again. Eleven, your remainder is one. Twelve, your remainder is two. Thirteen, your remainder is three. 14, remainder is 4, and 15, you're back to 0 again. So how do we use this? For my light ring code, which is making me look all shiny right now, uh, I've used this to switch different types of color modes. So I have a high brightness white version, then a nice warm light, dim white, and a dim warm light before it wraps through again. And that's controlled by a button. This is all based on Adafruit's simple example for their NeoPixel library, which is what I'm using to create the light. It's a NeoPixel ring with 24 pixels that's plugged into a DigiSpark controller. And there's also a button plugged in on pin 2, which is what I'm using to control the modes. So, here's a simple example. They've got you on pin 6 for the NeoPixels, and a 16 NeoPixel long strip or ring. It doesn't make a difference as long as you have the right number of pixels. They've got an initialization area where you tell it what your strip is like using those variables. And then we have this delay val variable. So once you've set up everything, uh, in your loop you have a for loop which uses that delay val variable to create a wipe effect. So instead of all the pixels changing color at once, they go one by one and the amount of time between them is determined by delay val. In this case, uh, the default is 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And so this basically starts at pixel zero, and then adds one and advances, but it's regulated by this delay val variable. And the color that you turn them to depends on what you set here. You feed it an RGB value, red, green, and blue values from zero to 255, which controls their brightness. So for example, in this case they've got zero value for red, 150 for green, and zero for blue. That means that red and blue are entirely off, whereas green is about in the middle of its range. You've got incrementation happening here, so each time it goes through the loop, it's going to add one to I, and that's the pixel that's currently being lit up. You're setting the color. You tell the controller to actually send those commands to the NeoPixels, and then you delay and start over again. This is limited to only run as long as i, your incrementing variable, is less than the total number of NeoPixels. So if my NumPixels value at the start is 10, then once it hits 10 NeoPixels, it will stop. So let's see what I've done with it. I've hooked up a NeoPixel ring with 24 LEDs in it, and they're attached to a DigiSpark controller which is an atTiny85 chip that's broken out into a really computer-friendly form that makes it super easy to program. But you can't control too many NeoPixels with it because it gets kind of hot. In this case, I've put the pixels on pin 1 and adjusted it to show 24 pixels. And I've decreased this delay val variable. We'll see why in a little bit. After that, I'm telling it that I have a button on pin 2, which is true. <laughs> and it is starting out in a zero state, which means that it's not connected. My button's legs are connected to pin 2 and 5 volts. So when the button is pushed, then it goes high, and this button state variable will be set to 1. After that, we've got our color mode variable, which starts at zero and will cycle through, and our three red, green, and blue values. If you want to just control brightness, you could have a single variable and set them all to the same thing but I want to be able to control the warmth of the light as well, which means setting them to different values. I tell it that my button pin is an input, and then we begin communicating with the NeoPixels. Here's our loop, and let's make this a little bigger. On each loop, we're going to check to see if the button is held down. This for loop looks pretty familiar. 
It's the same wipe code, so it starts with i being 0, that's the incrementing variable that tells you what pixel you're changing. Uh, again, it only goes up until you reach the maximum number of pixels, and again, you're incrementing once each time. So that part is the same, because I like the aesthetic effect of it wiping around the ring, it's cool. For actually setting the pixel color, we're taking pixel i, and we're telling it to set it to the three red, green, and blue values that we've assigned. Now by default, that's everything on full brightness, so everything is 255. And remember, that's mode 0. And so that happens the first time that the button is pressed. After that, we tell it to actually display the color, and we delay for 120 milliseconds. Now why do we pick that? Not only is this faster than it is in the example, because it's 120 one-thousandths of uh, of a second instead of half a second, but also this works as a debouncer. So if you've seen the button video, you know what this means. We are humans, we are not fast. Uh, when I push a button with my finger, I don't release it immediately. And so to keep that from being read multiple times and cycling through the modes really fast, instead it reads it a single time, provided that I don't hang on to it too long. Now here comes our modulo. Again, this has been the end of our for loop, and that's the code that loops over and over to wipe the color around the ring. We've moved on to the next part of our if the button is pressed do this section. And here's where we first interact with that color mode variable. We're going to increment it by 1 with modulo 4. That means 0, 1, 2, and 3 are our values, because 0 divided by 4 leaves 0 over, 1 divided by 4 leaves 1 over, 2 divided by 4 leaves 2 over. That means that I have three color options plus the zero base mode. I've decided to format it in this way so that I have an if, a couple of else ifs, and you can have a ma as many of those in the middle as you want, and then finally an else clause. I think this is a really intuitive way to structure if statements. In case you haven't seen an if statement before, obviously it starts with the word if, and then you have your condition in these parentheses. Color mode equals 1. But we have two equal signs. This is very important. This means that you are asking whether or not they're equal. You're comparing them, rather than stating that that variable shall now be equal to 1. This is a really common area to make mistakes, so always check how many equal signs you have. Close those parentheses and open brackets. And this is where you're going to put the functions that define the behavior. And this is where you're going to put the behavior to undertake if that condition is true. In this case, we're just setting the red, green, and blue values that will happen the next time I push the button. On zero, everything's at 255 and it's full brightness. On the next press, we're going to have red at full brightness, then green a little bit less bright, which means that we will have a sort of warm orangey red, because green and red make yellow. And if that doesn't quite make sense, I highly recommend getting a roll of NeoPixels and just trying it out for yourself. Then we get to the else ifs. So if it's not 1, then if it is 2, you will set everything to 100, and that's about 2 fifths brightness, about 40%. Then we have dim warm light, where I've just normalized everything down to that scale. So again, we have red being the highest, we have green at about 80% of that, and blue at about 40% of that. And then finally, else, we go back to full brightness. You can also use this to define a default state, so that, for example, if we didn't have the modulo on there, so it just incremented color mode each time by one, then uh, it would start at full brightness, go to warm light, then dim light, then dim warm light, and then the rest of the time, no matter what, it would always be bright. And so that's really useful if you want to have a default mode. And that's the end of our button press code. So that's all we do if the button is pressed. We do the for loop to set the pixels to their correct value, we increment the mode variable, and we set the colors for next time. And finally, there's a little snippet, just in case you want to tell it to do something else if the button isn't pressed. But as you can see, it's just a tiny little DigiSpark plugged directly into my USB power bank. And then I've racked the entire thing in masking tape to try and diffuse it a bit. I also hung a folded piece of paper over it to make it even more diffuse. 
I've soldered the 5 volt data and ground pins into their respective ones on the DigiSpark, although I used a little pluggable header so that I can switch out with a strip if I wanted to. And then I've got my button on the back so that I can change modes easily. I don't know if you can see that, but it's glorious.